Shalom. Apologies for that. It is so amazing to be in a room full of humans. Uh, it is uh, my dream for over three years now. I think some of my collaborators here at Red Hat in Israel and I have been trying to make this event happen. And I am so grateful that all of you have come today to hear us um, and to share your stories and to be part of this gathering. Um, my name is Diane Mueller and I am the Director of Community Development and a Distinguished Community Architect at Red Hat. And I have been with Red Hat for nine years, so I have been here for the whole arc of our cloud native journey, even before we called it cloud native, um, back in the days when it was a platform as a service built on MongoDB and Ruby and Rails and called Origin um, on the open source side of things. So I am totally thrilled to welcome you here today to the first Israeli OpenShift Commons gathering. So congratulate yourselves for making it here, <laughs> surviving lockdown, and, and hopefully um, enjoying today's event. And today, what we're going to try and do for all of you is um, unlock what I call the potential of collaboration. And as we all know, it, Red Hat Open source is in our DNA. You've heard every Red Hatter say that at some point at some event, but it truly is. And as you start to see the evolution of cloud native technologies, you begin to realize the complexity of these systems. And so today is all about making connections. So what I really think today, um, we talk a lot about data science workloads on Red Hat and on OpenShift, but it's really about facial recognition. So today is your opportunity to meet a lot of Red Hatters, as quite a few Red Hatters are gonna be talking today, um, and to meet some of your peers from across the amazing startup communities that are here in, in Tel Aviv and across Israel, as well as some of the contributors to the upstream projects. Um, because all of these community projects feed into your workloads, into the infrastructure that's underneath OpenShift and underneath Kubernetes, and that's really, these connections that you make today are the ones that are going to help you make your decisions to make your companies and your projects successful. So, if you know anything about OpenShift, you know that it is open source at the core and that we work in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, and if you know anything about that, it really got its kickoff with Kubernetes. How many of you have heard of Kubernetes? Yeah, good, thank you, I don't have to explain that one. But um, at the core of everything around the CNCF is Kubernetes and at the core of OpenShift as well. But there are also, I think now, 67 incubating projects um, or sandbox projects and a dozen or so incubating ones and a number of graduated ones such as Kubernetes that um, are really all interlinked. So one of the things to remember about this, it's in the beginning of open source projects, maybe we would take one project like OpenShift Origin and we try and get you to work on that with us, right? And contribute to that one project. And now it's much more complex. All of these projects have interlinked um, release cycles, feature requests, feedback loops, and we have a, a very complex system that um, with OpenShift, what we are trying to do is we take many of those, not all of the CNCF projects, but many of them, we contribute to them, some of them we contributed to the CNCF, and we bring them together and create OpenShift, um, which is much more than just Kubernetes. It has a lot of other projects that are embedded into it and that we use and we contribute to as Red Hatters. Um, and so for many of you, you probably think OpenShift equals Kubernetes. So it's much more than just one project now. So it also is much more than just the, the infrastructure layer. It's also Linux. It's also uh, RHEL Core OS. It's also Fedora Core OS, which is what we run with OKD, which is the open source side of OpenShift. So there's a lot of complexity in there. And what we do at Red Hat is distill that down make sure that we are incorporating stable releases of each of these projects um, when we pull them into OpenShift and make sure that we do the CI and CD builds. And you're gonna hear a lot about this stuff um, over today's highly packed 
um, agenda. And we're really going to really talk about how you go from building an application image to deploying it on OpenShift and to making sure that it continuously cycles and patches and releases and make sure that's a smooth, seamless thing. You're going to hear a lot about GitOps in the demos to come. But one of the things, and I keep talking about the complexity of these relationships um, that you're going to try and build today. If you try to do this on your own, um, it's very difficult. When it was the first project that was just OpenShift Origin, I knew probably all the 500 people who were working on the project. I personally knew everybody. Uh, some of the faces are in the room today, so thank you for your efforts over that. Now, as we hit the complexity of it, I have to apply a little bit of data science to find some of you people and to find the people who can help me get the feature that I want or that my customer or end user or partner wants to drive into the OpenShift project. So um, to do that, um, if you look at this wonderful, I call this the jellyfish diagram because that's what it reminds me for. And it's also amorphous um, because every time I rerun the network diagram on my cloud native application, um, it changes. So each of these colors represents an organization, uh, and a lot of them are unknowns. The, the light purple ones are all the people who use their Gmail accounts for GitHub. This is all GitHub data. Um, so I haven't uh, de-anonymized them. I let them be nice and anonymous. But if you take Kubevert, for example, and Kubernetes, and the one in the lower corner is Istio and the Operator Framework, three major projects that we've been working on that are part and parcel of the OpenShift platform um, and key pieces of it, you can see the people who are in the connections here um, are the connectors that work on multiple projects. And so when I'm trying to find a speaker, perhaps, to talk to you about Kubevert, or to talk to you about Submariner. I have to now use tools. I need to use the data science workloads that we run on OpenShift to find you, to make those connections. And so today at the OpenShift Commons, we're gonna try and do that, a little bit of that for you, to make you um, able to find the people at Red Hat, at our wonderful partners who are out there in the Expo Hall. Many of them are contributors. Uh, the Dynatrace folks have a wonderful project, Kepton, um, that's in the open source world that I've been working with a little bit. You know, everybody here is basically a contributor. When I talk about community, I just don't mean the code contributions. It's the feedback, it's the documentation, it's the requests for new innovations or things that we, edge cases we didn't know about. Those things are all community contributions. And so instead of thinking of yourselves as having to be coders in order to be part of the community, think of yourselves as community participants. That's really what you all are to me. And it, I am incredibly grateful for you coming today to share what your needs are and what your release feedback loops are for your products or for your enterprise deployments on top of OpenShip so that we can incorporate them into the product together and collaborate together to make these things happen for you and also take what we learn from you and drive it into the upstream so that it can make these features available for everyone. And that's the beauty of open source. So if I kind of filter down on here, there's, this is just yesterday's thing, and it doesn't quite fit on the screen, it's so big. But um, you can see how many commits, 52,000 about for all of these projects. 15K of them were by Red Hatters. So if I just filter out everybody, and um, I think it was about 329 or so of them uh, are Red Hat people. We're all different kinds of people at Red Hat. We're engineers, we're documentation people, we're solution architects. We're, we're working in the upstream on the weekends on our Raspberry Pis and making features to make sure that things run on bare metal. You know, these are people who are passionate about open source and about contributing in the open and collaborating with you to make these things work. So if I clean this up a little bit and just pull out some of the Red Hatters, and uh, the screen size is a little off, but that's my, I apologize for that. You'll start to see um, all the Red Hatters 
and luckily the colors in red, and these are the different projects that were on the other screen. But we're also, Red Hat has a number of people who are contributing um, as a special interest group or tags in the Kubernetes and the CNCF world. Um, and we make sure that they're leading and helping to make sure that the projects stay on course and the release cycles stay um, in sync with each other. And that's a massive task. And so one of the things I think um, that you can trust Red Hat to do is to be, and all of the other folks that are part of the CNCF as well, it's not just Red Hat, is to help make sure that the projects that we incorporate into our products are stable, that they're mature, that we're, and you know, some people think of being opinionated as a bad thing, but in, in this case, being an opinionated about which release of Kubernetes you're gonna put into your production system is an important thing. And so, I think one of the things you can trust Red Hat for is to be able to have the depth and breadth of engineering to know which pieces and parts and which releases fit together in the puzzle that make up the deployments and the infrastructure that you need to run your workloads. So if we kind of look at this a little bit deeper, each one of these dots on this thing, um, the red ones, and their, their, their names, um, are different people who are working on interesting ones. And is Oren in the, in the room? Yeah, there's Oren. So, yeah. So, thank Oren for his contributions to Kubevert, the operator framework, and even Kubernetes. And, um, and this, I, as an individual outside of this, if I were at an enterprise trying to find people who have knowledge of these three different projects, who can help inform me of what, you know, which operator to use with Kubevert or what piece of the project um, is in limbo at this point or at risk, I can use data science running on OpenShift to um, find Oren and ask him a question about that operator that's not working on my deployment or is working um, and see where these things are all working at. And I'm told I have two minutes left. I'm loving this. We started five minutes late. How can that be? Oops. So, yeah, and it's not just about Red Hat. So like a lot of times people go, oh, you shouldn't just tout Red Hat. All of our customers, there's this thing that's going on in the universe and we've hit a tipping point in open source. All of, almost every one of our customers has their finger in the pie. They're also contributing to open source. So you can go through all of those anonymous and unknown people and that amorphous jellyfish, and you can find people from Cisco, from Amadeus, from SoftBank, and all of our customers are also. Because right now we're collaborating side by side on Kubernetes, on the CNCF stuff, with our customers, with our partners. It's everybody is part of it. And that's really what OpenShift Commons is. It's an ecosystem-based community model. So we're no longer focused on trying to recruit you just to contribute to our one project. We want to make sure that we're all connected across all of these communities and that we can make sure that the collaboration that we're doing um, is effective. The communication between all of you um, is effective. Um, and to do that, we've created something called OpenShift Commons. If you go to commons at openshift.org, you can join it and I'll throw you on our Slack channel. It might make you come on stage someday. We do tons of these. Everything we're going to do today will be videotaped, uploaded to YouTube, so your peers across the globe will see it um, and give you feedback on it. There's lots of working groups and SIGs that you can join. Um, I'm supposed to talk a little bit about um, Red Hat Open Hybrid Cloud because that is what we call this thing that OpenShift has become because it's not just about OpenShift, it's about all the other pieces of the puzzle as well. And you're gonna hear about them today. Um, and so regardless of which kind of applications you're trying to deploy, there is a piece of the puzzle that makes those containers and those microservices or the data science pieces or some of our partner packages run easily and smoothly on OpenShift and scale gracefully. Um, whether you're doing it in physical or virtual or on a private cloud or on the public cloud or maybe even on the edge. And I'm sure we're gonna get a little bit of edge talk today too. So the thing about OpenShift is there's many, many flavors of OpenShift. I work, I'm the chair of the OKD working group, so the OpenShift 
uh, sibling stream open source side, but we have OpenShift Platform Plus, the container platform you can run on premise, the Kubernetes engine if you just want that bit. Um, and then on top of it, we have uh, under, underneath it, we have Enterprise Linux Core OS, the Enterprise Linux. There's a ton in here. And today, you're going to hear from a multitude of people who are using different pieces and different functionalities and contributing in many, many different ways. So what I am supposed to say in like 60 seconds or less um, is that we have a comprehensive solution for you. And as you give us feedback on it, and as you grow it onto wherever you're deploying it, whether it's AWS or Azure or IBM's cloud or OpenShift dedicated or on some other cloud, Alibaba, DigitalOcean, wherever you want to deploy OpenShift, because it's OpenShift, you can deploy and, and you'll see it in some of the demos that are coming up next, move from one cloud to the next because you have uh, an ubiquitous platform and, and construct for you to take your applications and deploy it to. So basically, we're trying to be as flexible as we can, but we need your feedback. You are what helps us drive that innovation. When you tell us where your workloads are going, what the next cool thing on the edge you want to do, you're going to hear about some cool things, but I'm sure you all have even more feedback. We really want to help you um, make the most of this platform. So please do give us your feedback. Um, you know, we've talked about some of the work that we're doing out in the CNCF, but we really do have a, a real large investment in engineers and product managers and solution architects who are contributing back into the open source. We make sure we give people the time to do that. And that's part of the productization of Kubernetes. And we're really trying very hard to make sure that you have a consistent experience across all of the public clouds when you're running and deploying your applications. So today, as I said, we have a hugely packed, um, and I'm going to have to get off the stage in a minute or two. I'm going to take another minute or two because I started five minutes late. Um, but there's a ton of folks who are going to come and share their knowledge. And today, I keep saying this, it is about facial recognition. This is the first in-person event I've been to in two and a half years. I'm out of my pajama bottoms, right? I'm here in Israel, and uh, I really love the fact that I can see your faces, right? And I can make that human connection again. Because when we do this work in Zoom or in Slack or in GitHub or on IRC or wherever you're matrixing into um, these days, um, having that human connection today, ta please take advantage of that. Keep the masks on, drink the coffee, maybe not through the mask, but you know, just really, you're in a room with humans again. And it's a wonderful thing. And I can't tell you how grateful I am um, that you've come and decided to join us here today. Uh, and please take a moment if you can. If you haven't joined OpenShift Commons, OpenShift Commons is organizational based. So only one of you from your organization needs to join. And then the rest of you can all pile on. So please do take a moment and join. And we'll set you up. But I've talked a whole lot here, and I'm sure I went over a little bit, but sorry, Liad. Um, I have to also thank all of the folks from Red Hat Israel who made this event happen. Liad, Ortel, Idan, many who's going to come up on the stage now. Without the local folks here on the ground, this would not have happened. So please give them a huge thank you right now. Thank you. Many. <laughs>